If you're watching this video, you're probably wondering how fast your DS1522 Plus or now refreshed version DS1525 Plus is. So in this video, we're going to be testing how long does it take to build a RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10? How long does it take to boot it up, to shut it down? How long does it take to upload 19 gigabyte files to this NAS and download as well? We will also check what's the maximum speed you can get from this thing. We will also check how long does it take to transfer one gigabyte file through Synology proxy uh, connection. Then we will also check how fast is the USB, how quickly we can transfer 19 gigabyte files through USB. We will also do some hacking and uh, check how quickly we can transfer uh, data from one NVMe to another NVMe. And we will finish it up with a transcoding test. How long does it take to transcode one minute 4K file streaming remotely? And if you have seen previous episodes, we've been testing our uh, UNAS Pro and also our TerraMaster NAS. So we'll see which one of these three NAS is, is going to be the fastest. So in order to get the best performance, we will be using uh, SATA 2.5 inch SSDs. These are Kingston 480 gigabyte uh, modules. We'll be setting them in RAID 10 for the testing. We will also make sure it has the fastest network connection. We'll add this 10 gigabit adapter. And for NVMe testing, we will use WD Red 1 terabyte SSDs. Okay, let's do the first test, which is booting up. Okay, let's do our first test. This is booting. Press the button and wait for the admin panel to become available. Usually it takes around 30 seconds to one minute to get this available for login. Uh, let's have a look how long it takes on Synology. And that is... Uh, that's one minute, 11 seconds. That's pretty good. Obviously we are using SSDs, so the process is much quicker compared to hard drives. Okay, let's continue the booting process and see when SMB service is gonna be available. From the moment of pushing the button until loading uh, the SMB service, it takes one minute, 16 seconds. Perfect. Okay, let's test how long it's gonna to take to power it off. This is very crucial for those that are running UPS because you don't want to run out of battery halfway through the shutdown process because your data will be corrupted or potentially you could lose your data. So how long does it take to shut it down? With SSDs again and nothing running in the background, it shouldn't take too long. So that's 16 seconds. I think you couldn't hope for anything better. Obviously, if you're running virtual machines and apps, it's going to take some time to close those apps in the background, free the memory and then shut the NAS down. Okay, let's have a look how long it's going to take uh, for us to build RAID 5 using five SSDs. Hard drives usually take longer. SSDs, uh, usually previous tests show it's taking around 30 minutes. This one was 16 minutes. That's impressive. Synology were advertising that they will be speeding up RAID builds uh, because they don't actually need to format every single bit on the drive if it's empty. And it is true, it only took us 16 minutes to build RAID 5. Perfect. Okay, let's check how long it's gonna take for RAID 5 rebuild. So imagine one of the drives fail, you need to replace it with a blank drive how long it's going to take to rebuild the RAID. Because during the rebuild process, uh, NAS usually works much, much slower because it's doing all the calculations to protect the data across all drives. Previously, Synology offered something like this, but nowadays only QNAP and a few other brands, uh, they allow you to choose how much performance you want to dedicate to read rebuild. And you could choose maximum performance, so the rebuild happens very quickly. But sometimes if you need uh, to allow access to your data in your business environment, you don't want to slow down your NAS too much. So you use a little resources to rebuild the RAID. I think Synology doesn't have option like this. So again, with SSDs, uh, it should take quicker than with hard drives, bigger capacity, longer rebuild times. Okay, I decided to throw in another test. How long it's gonna to take to build RAID 6 using five SSDs? RAID 6 obviously allows two drives to be broken without losing any data, so you can still access and use those drives 
because with RAID 5, if one drive fails, you need to replace them fairly quickly. With RAID 6, if one drive fails, it's not a big deal because another drive still need to fail. So let's have a look. Is it going to take longer to build RAID 6 compared to RAID 5? Because now we are um, calculating more parity data across these five drives. And it takes 28 minutes and 53 seconds. So it's actually quite similar. So let's have a look how long it's going to take to build RAID 10. We're going to be using four SSDs in this. And obviously it's very basic RAID mode. It's mirroring two drives on one side and two drives on another side. And that's 12 minutes. That's uh, impressive. So now we have finished with RAID building and rebuilding tests. Let's um, move on to actual file transfer speeds. So this is our testing machine, Minis Forum MS01. It has two optical ports. So we're going to be connecting this Minis Forum to unified 10 gigabit switch. Then we will be connecting Synology 10 gigabit port at the back to unify 10 gigabit uh, port. But since it has only optical ports, we will be using adapter like this. What this adapter does is it converts from optical to copper. So let's have a look how long it's going to take to upload from my computer to a um, Synology NAS 19 gigabyte uh, of files. And that took 37 seconds. So let's try to download this folder of 19 gigabyte of files in total from Synology to a um, mini computer. It actually took a little longer to download the files, 48 seconds. Now we're going to be testing average uh, and the maximum performance for this um, 10 gigabit connection between NAS and the computer. Uh, we will be transferring 1500 megabyte uh, file forwards and backwards a couple of times and we'll be seeing how long it takes to complete those tests, what's the average value, what's the maximum score. So let's have a look. Let's start the test. Let's do read and let's do the write test. How long it's going to take to complete. And it takes 36 seconds. And I can see the maximum write performance was 1200 megabytes a second. And the best read performance is 1225 megabytes a second. I decided to squeeze in also RAID 6 test using five SART SSDs, just in case someone was curious if four SSDs is not enough. So this is going to be five SSDs in RAID 6, the same test again. So we're going to do 1500 megabyte file reading and writing uh, several times so we can see what the average is in R. So it takes 35 seconds to complete. So basically it's the same speed. So let's switch back to RAID 10 again and let's find out how long it's going to take to transfer one gigabyte file remotely from the office to home. As you may know already, Synology have two megabit a second um, cap on their proxy services. So we're probably going to see that bottleneck in our test. So we are using quick connect connection to transfer one gigabyte file and uh, it takes three minutes 17 seconds if you want to achieve better speeds you cannot rely on synology quick connect it's quite slow service uh, but it's the safest uh, connection you can have to get better speeds you can set up your own uh, vpn either tail scale or other vpn or you can open ports if you know what you're doing and then you'll get the maximum upload and download speeds. But if you're paying premium price for your Synology, you probably want to use their Quick Connect service. And if it's slow, then what's the point of Synology? Okay, now we can move on to USB tests. Uh, I, I was trying to use this NVMe to USB uh, drive, but Synology wouldn't recognize it. Obviously, when I was doing tests with uh, Thermaster, it uh, did recognize this SSD, but Synology, for some reason, wouldn't do that. So I guess the speed will be uh, limited to SSD or SAT speeds. So we'll be simply using an adapter, which is USB 3. So let's plug it in and see how long it's going to take to copy 19 gigabyte file from the SSD. So we are using the same folder with the same 19 gigabyte uh, file. And it fluctuates around 50 megabytes a second speed. 
and takes 7 minutes 18 seconds. So let's do another test. We'll be copying from RAID 6, from those 5 SSDs, uh, onto NVMe SSD. We had to do a little bit of hacking to enable these WD RAID SSDs to be seen as storage pools and volumes. If you want to see uh, the recording of that video, uh, let me know. I'm going to upload it on the channel so you can see how to make these SSDs available for Synology. Otherwise, they are only allowing their own SSDs to be used for storage. And those SSDs are overpriced. So we are now copying from our RAID to NVMe and it takes around 600 megabytes a second. That's faster than our USB speeds. 31 seconds. In our next test, we're going to be copying this 19 gigabyte files from one NVMe to another NVMe because these NVMe's can achieve more than 2000 megabytes a second. Let's have a look. Are there any bottlenecks? So let's copy from one NVMe to another NVMe. And the speeds we are getting is actually five, 600 megabytes a second, and it takes 37 seconds. So we can see the speeds are very similar when we were copying data from RAID and from one NVMe to another NVMe, it's the same speed. So that indicates that um, Snoggy have capped the NVMe speeds. Okay, our last test is gonna be a transcoding test. We have one minute 4K file, how long it's gonna take to transcode this file. If you had multimedia friendly CPU inside, like uh, Celeron or something, or Intel Core, series or maybe if you had graphics card installed in your NAS this GPU chip would convert this video on the go and we could watch this video seamlessly without buffering without stops but since this NAS doesn't have GPU it's going to be interesting to see how long it takes to play this one minute file remotely so let's press play and see how long it's going to take to watch this one minute file and it's obviously buffering all the time and it's taking way longer than one minute Total is 14 minutes 20 seconds to watch one minute file. It's really bad. If you want to watch 4K videos, this NAS is definitely not for you. So in order to compare uh, the other NASs that we tested before, like Unify UNAS Pro and Thermaster T9450, these are the scores we were getting before. Compared, compared to other NASs, it takes 50% less time to boot the NAS and it also shuts down the NAS three times faster than other models. Also RAID 5 building is much faster. RAID rebuilding is actually not that much faster than Terramaster. Terramaster was doing better. Comparing RAID 10 building, Terramaster took almost one hour to build that RAID, whereas Synology was 12 minutes, because Synology is ignoring empty space on simple RAIDs like RAID 1 and RAID 10. Then copying files to a NAS, it took actually quite similar time compared to other NASes, but downloading files actually took longer than other NASes like UNAS and Terramaster. Overall, a NAS performance tester uh, came up with better results compared to other NASes. Remote connection is uh, faster on UNAS, on Unify uh, proxy service. Terramaster speeds were terrible, but Synology speed is uh, very similar to Unify. They probably have similar cap Regarding USB speeds, Thermaster took only 5 minutes 57 seconds to transfer 19 gigabyte files, for Synology it took 7 minutes, much longer. And obviously UNAS Pro doesn't have USB port at all. Internal uh, NVMe copy tests, Thermaster was faster, it took less than 30 seconds, or Synology was 37 seconds. Regarding transcoding 4K file, uh, UNAS Pro doesn't have playback option remotely, so you have to download the file to play, whereas Terramaster also didn't perform very well because the CPU is a without a graphics chip. But it took 12 minutes for Terramaster and 14 minutes for Synology. And the top speeds that we were achieving, uh, UNAS Pro was 1050 megabytes second, Terramaster was 1082 megabytes second, and Synology 1224 megabytes second. So regarding the top speed, Synology is actually the fastest. So this is how these results look like when you compare side by side all the tests. So in the third place is UNAS Pro with a total time to complete those tasks, one hour, 35 minutes, four seconds. Second place, Synology DS 
1522 plus or now uh, called DS 1525 plus. One hour, 17 minutes, nine seconds. And the winner so far is Thermaster. One hour, 15 minutes and 40 seconds. I hope these performance tests will help you to decide is Synology for you or should you look at QNAP or UNAS or Thermaster or other brands. If you want me to share any of the specifics in this test, like uh, how I did NVMe uh, script to enable storage space on third-party SSDs, or how to do direct connection through the LAN and PC, or other things, do let me know 